Hello everyone. Today's talk will be a very interesting one, and it will be one where very unique ideas will be discussed. The idea of today's talk is、um, self as other. When we look at reality, we can see others around us walking, and sometimes we find ourselves、uh, pulled towards similar. There's a Vedic quote, I believe, that says it's, it's passing on some wisdom, some transcendental wisdom. And the the sages who said this quote, Vedic sages, said to be in the world, but not of it. And that kind of statement makes you think of what that means to be in the world, but not of it. And so, when you think deeply, you see the concept of self as other means that we are keeping. Ourselves as an individuation, for our considerations of our externality are individual. It's as if because the world was individual, I guess you're an individual. However, now as one cultivates an understanding, an existential understanding of self, he sees beyond the idea. Life force is present through all things, regardless of how you categorize the force or what you do. Something is making things happen. Regardless of whether the CEO is at his table, the company is running. So now that the company is running, it's very important to see what's running the company and what is running you. And this is where questions begin to find you more than you find them. It's as if once your curiosity stops, life's curiosity in what you are here to do is reengaged. Now, the reason I brought the concept of self as other. Is because I was walking in a mall and I was look,、uh, thinking about the concepts of quantum physics. How there is there's a sense of quantum entanglement where the electron is multi-present. You know. So when we have something like that, I was walking in the mall and I just wondered, what if I am right now an instant experience, and if the same particle was in all parts? So what if while right now I'm walking. There is a subtler level of my experience that is going through everyone's eyes, so that perception is not limited to my condition, but is actually flowing beyond how the externality suggests manifestation. When you see this concept that you could be walking, and suddenly you get the sense that in a very accelerated reality, where things happen in an instant, perhaps in an instant, perhaps in an instant, there is an experience. Through all realities, as if this moment of existence that we have, others have it too. Others have moments of existence too, and it's like our, our. I don't want to use the word frequency here because it's pointing it towards the linear understanding, but it's as if we are the awareness where intention creates in. And so you kind of see this moment of existence is something that is very known to you, but very unknown when you look at others. Because it seems that when we look at ourselves, there's a subjective view that we have of ourselves, including the physical one as well. But when we look at others, it's physical unless they communicate or move. So it's as if, even though we're talking about presence, but you come to the present moment. So it's as if there is a movement. In your movements, that when one、uh, attention to one certain type of movement stops, you suddenly realize the other cycles you're present in. So, in other words, it has to be movement that creates the opportunity for change. And so, the opportunity for change is also natural too. You might plan your life in a certain way, and suddenly 
a certain wind of life just comes and it, it pushes you beyond your understanding. Suddenly you see, oh my God, I thought I was supposed to live like a king. Suddenly I'm holding the beggar's hand. And suddenly you see the opposite. You thought your whole life you were not going to have a penny, but you will see that at some times it's as if life is saying, now is your time. But back then it wasn't because your awareness wasn't there. It's as if we need existential responsibility in order for newer things and greater actions to be done uh, in our awareness. In our awareness. What that means is when you recognize that what manifestation is in your awareness, you realize on that subjective realm of consideration, which is making us more self-aware than the animal, we are creating through a sense of observing. So observance and creation is thought mainly, especially in Sassan, to be in a cause and effect relationship. Something caused the effect of it, observance, you know. And uh, it's very clear to me that we have been thinking that our dimensions are just things that we can define from the unknown with linear language. So I can begin telling you how, how the dimensions are, just like how, for example, that party was last weekend. Do you know? So it's one of those things that you cannot communicate that way. That's the whole point. So because you cannot communicate it that way, it's, it's something where the experience of space and time, as you begin to become aware of your nature of being, is not uh, linear. It's, it's not based on the dimensions you think. Experience has an, a spontaneous activation that in any moment a new shift can happen. What that means is that you might be thinking that you've been walking this whole time, but regardless, the earth has been rotating. And so it's very important to see that our stories are the walls that limit us from our own understanding. So the concept of self as other means that you are not no longer limited to a sense of identification of self. Your self is no longer words. Your self is no longer just imagery. It is awareness to all imagery. It is that moment where you look at yourself, not in the mirror on the wall, but in the mirror of life. You begin to see why you're alive. You begin to see that at times you thought there was a reason, there was a great reason, but no, the stories don't matter. It is your awareness to the fluctuation of your form. And so you will see that when form moves, comparison has been used. And comparison has led to the senses of self and other. Because aspects of our plane of existence are dualistic. So when we look at a dualistic reality, it is the, uh, it is the job of the being who is associating as an individual to discover his integrative sense of being. Your essence is something where your psychology will move you towards an integration. So if you were now to observe reality, you would begin to see that integration is an act of allowance. It is for you to let things happen. For example, when you let that other person play in the game, suddenly allowance, suddenly vitality, suddenly life. When, when you see certain people who don't do work and suddenly doing work, it's as if they are, they are applying their life force. They're giving their life for their life. There's a story I would like to share. It's a Zen story. I've shared it a couple times. I'm going to share it again. Uh, it's a traditional Zen story. I think it's Japanese. It's pretty much... There's this man, there's this monk, or let's call him a say, just some guy, uh, realizing more about life and going deeper into his perception of what is real. As this man does and he's sitting on the grass, suddenly he gets a profound realization that is like moving his veil. So in other words, it's as if his whole being is reviewing something in a new way. That's kind of like a realization this guy had, this cognition. So a, a kind of attempt towards a state that is more aware, so something closer to nirvana. Now, at the same time this happened, uh, how the story goes is that there was this, um, there was this uh, dark minion. <laughs> 
So this other being, kind of dark minion, observing this guy who just got realizing, just this, this, Zen, this Buddhist monk who just got an understanding, right? Just got some realization. This minion looks at it, freaks out, and he runs to, his, uh, to the Dark Lord, as, as the story says. So he runs to the Dark Lord, and he's like, Dark Lord, this guy just understood something, you know? He's, he's realizing what, what's going on, you know? <laughs> and this is where the significance of the story is, because the Dark Lord turns around as if nothing has happened. And he tells them, don't worry about it. Because the truth that this man finds, he will make a belief out of it. Man will make a belief out of something which he's never seen before because that is how he's trying to dull it down and identify as an individual. If you're constantly trying to build a self that does not include others, that does not include the prosperity of other life forms, then you will see your life form will immediately be solidified. It's as if that moment when you go in nature, every being knows what your intention is, regardless of what you do. Even the animals, even the trees, even your own aspects of your silence. You are a great being in the sense that you are aware beyond your changing form. You are an inferior being in the sense that you choose to be individual to then work with new frames of conception that will become relevant to your whole. You see, multidimensional understanding is something where I'm pretty much saying if you become attention, attentive to, the fab, to your plane of existence, to the fabric of reality, literally, if you begin observing what life means to you, you will get some profound understanding. And the voice of no one should be in front of you when you want to go on this deep walk of understand, self-understanding. No one has a right to say anything to you about you as a human being wanting to be aware of your being. We are many different points of conception uh, in one conception. So we must have tolerance because if we do not, it will not be survival of the fittest. It will be survival of the aware in the sense that all those people who thought were together would break apart to be recreated in a different sense of transition. The strength of a madman is in his walk that doesn't stop. He continues on with his madness and that is what is profound. That is what is profound about the wild man in which his care is not on the temporal universe. And so when we see a person who is giving compassion 24-7 like the Dalai Lama, who is... <laughs> and this is not in a sense that way, it's just a sense that this being has an affinity for life which is making himself a graceful... A communicator that brings awareness. You must realize there are many teachers here, but it is responsibility of the pilots of the consciousness, of the advanced communicators, to stand up. The the <laughs> the, the Indian gurus and the yogi uh, the gurus uh, that you know that uh, come from the east to the west. Uh, their job, they are doing their job. Do you see that? Do you see that? It's as if. Uh, <laughs> We need no longer gurus, but we need people who are activated to their highest potential. That is what matters. It does not matter if, if, if it's uh, what we do. You know, I, it, for me, it doesn't matter how this walk of life goes. It doesn't matter if I'm uh, living a life that's uh, constantly under the control of my ego, or it's constantly uh, just in the flow of just how I find nature to come. Regardless, perception is at first a mountain to climb, but once you've gotten into the peak, you'll be like, gosh, I gotta go get back home. So your experiences do not suggest truth, but the truth is how your awareness is aware of all experience. It's simple things. It's in the sense that we begin to see that manifestation is never cruel. The nature of this world is that something creates then it dies. <laughs> That's it. So just like how our milk uh, gets ruined, we will see that other life forms are getting ruined. And we must not just value the milk in the fridge. 
you know? Just because we don't want something, just because we're not involved in the life of others does not mean our perception is not capturing their experiential awareness. Your awareness has many knowings. And so once you acknowledge yourself as a, trans as a transparent and transcendental moment of being, a moment of existence, then you will begin to see that self is other. Because to see self as other really means that you are looking at a form in which you are considering a spatial difference, you know, a, a, a formal difference. In other words, you are a form, that, that, that sense of uh, um, body is another form. But at the same time, there is a profound element that is, um, it's keeping all of it here. In other words, it's not, it's not as important as why you and your friend are communicating or discussing what truth is or what can be or what religion or science is right. It's all about how aware you are while you and your friend are in the same room to communicate even about truth. Your self-awareness means to move beyond the story. To move beyond the story. To move beyond the story simply means that to understand life beyond the conclusions that we're making now. You are, you are a being that is going through infinite change. How convinced are you of your own conclusions, you know? Sometimes I'm not that convinced, you know, by what I think. So we must have the decency to allow all beings to exist efficiently. Because think about it, a certain amount of time here uh, in this certain amount of time that we have, we have certain contributions we can do, you know? And I've noticed that in a world where, at, as kids, you're constantly being told about other great men, your mind seems to rethink in their patterns of greatness. Where it's as if uh, so many new leaders are not being found because they've, they've read about other leaders and they've, they've just stopped. You are an energy, you have a life force. In an instant, your, your responsibility to be involved in this life will take you, take you to the greatest adventure in which your contribution is your whole being. And when I say your, your whole being, that means uh, that person who was feeding the hungry was doing a good job. But there's a difference between a person who feeds the hungry based on his idea oh, that these people need help and there's a difference between a person who gives without reason. There is a, there is a magnificent uh, uh, sense of being to a being that, for example, uh, does things not without reason, but without a too much fixed, solidified reason. What that means is when you walk, you don't tell your mind, you don't tell your leg, okay, take this step, take this leg, you just walk. It has incorporated in a natural sense of handling. Uh, a lot of your things in your life need to become part of your natural handling and the greatest thing that can give you this natural handling is self-awareness, which means that all those others that are making your ability in a certain way, you must review their reality. All those people who you thought were mean to you, who thought you were nice to you, they're people. They are a changing life process. That person <laughs> who you thought was hating you, who was in a sense uh, opposing you, was only opposing you because something in his reality made you real enough for that to happen. When we look at understanding, reality cannot be segmented. If it is, it is our own illusion in not trying to look at the thing totally. And to... <laughs> Very gently get back, I saw in the mall that people are walking. I've had experiences of instant knowing, and I've wondered how does this knowing take form? It has come clear to me based on my obser observation of uh, ancient literature and also current literature that we cannot, we can try to build bridges from the distant past to now. We can try to do the things that our other people did in the past. But right now, the greatest solution is one where we do not think of solutions in the same proximity where the problems are being made. What that means is that uh, you need to have the ego's ability in, in, in just ascending and just seeing the whole view. It's as if all those human beings in the West who cared, who just 
were aware that human life is precious, not just the patriotism to an ideology that makes you think a piece of land is yours. Nothing is yours. <laughs> you are part of this land. The land owns you because we all know where many people go after death. So it's very clear to me that consciousness is its own introduction to a new view of its plane of existence. There is not one set curriculum. You yourself are the origin of your awareness. Become aware of all that means to be an origin. If you're convinced, look at yourself just like that eagle uh, who in a sense could, for example, go up and see that the view from, from the top and seeing all the trees was much different than the view he had on the branches. So of course, when you look from the branches, oh gosh, some predator might kill me, you know? But if you suddenly look at the limit, limit, limitless sky, you will see that you have a potential to exist in a newfound way. Conception is not illusion. It is simply how things are. You are, you are here to study life, and life is the study of how things are. So tell me, do you want to take notes? Do you want to use the same method you use in school and to taking notes of what life is? That bird sat on a branch, do you want to take notes? Or do you want to allow your mind to receive your moment as a whole moment in which individuation is not segmented to then find a solution? The problems and answers are handling one another. It's as if you are that CEO and those, those two, the problem and answer, know what to do. Because you as a being have found your organization within your existen existential view. Limitation is a choice when you see you have a choice to be limitless. To be limitless at first might come across as an idea in which you have to try for, but in essence, after trying a couple of times, after being that person who went to every cave, you will suddenly see, oh my God, there are caves in my internal dimensions. What that means is solitude has nothing to do with your location. You're going from a segmented sense of reality in regards that things change uh, from step A to step B to step C because how man is receiving it. But when you look at the actuality of the experience, life has given us many possibilities. Just as it has given you a body and it has given you an awareness beyond this body, similarly it has given you a plane of existence and an awareness beyond the plane of existence to create. So similarly, now that I am an awareness in which my physical body can move in a fractal manner, we can see that the awareness that is uh, my the awareness that is this plane of existence too moves like this body similar to how for example with an intention your arm moves you know it's like you have an intention to change the world but you see oh god it didn't change oh I, 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 I prayed for it why didn't the world change you know and then suddenly you also see that, you, but you had an intention to move your arm and pick something from your table and your hand moved, your intention worked. So how is it that your intention worked on a certain level and on another level it didn't? Because it was about the reality of what was actually there. So it's like that moment where you, you, you know somebody and it's that moment where that person is like your closest friend. You have had a history with them. So you know what's going on, Do you know? So it's very important that we begin to see that there is a potential of our experience that moves beyond how we are conceiving space and time in our current awareness. Because self-awareness has no position when it is the awareness to all positions, as we can see that this physical body, based on evolution, has been, has been in a sense working and just, in a sense, changing. When we see transcendence, that means there is space to grow. Don't worry, this plant is not secluded in some box of ideology. Okay? When I say plant, I mean uh, similar to how this ex growing existence we have, similar to how this planet is also uh, looking in new ways. Man creates hierarchy and he separates his world and he looks at one part of it and he's like, okay, I can see how that works. And he looks at another part of it and he's like, okay, I can see how that works. And then suddenly tries to look at the whole thing and he's like, oh my God, I can't see how it works. Do you know why? Because you have created so many individual moments of thinking you know what's going on, but you never do. What you know is how much stability you can have in accepting what your reality is based on the information you have. What that means is, if I see the coffee shop is closed, then there's no coffee for today, you know? 
But if I know that the coffee shop is open to a certain time, it is my responsibility to get there. Because not everything is adjusted to be perfect for this individual form. You got to work with your awareness. You got to look at life. You got to see if you want to associate with more the fingers or the palm that holds all, uh, everything together. You know, holds the fingers together. So it, it's, uh, it's very important to know yourself. Really, it's very important. <laughs> I think it's more important than making money because when you know yourself, you give yourself existential room to grow. And so your ambitions do not become things that you plan for, you know. It's as if the whole approach of how we are choosing to live a life is not helping how the system is. So another kid, for example, going into the same system and behaving in the same way is in a sense being an asshole because he's not trying a new method. Your newest method should be ones that your whole ancestry looks at you and like, holy shit, he just did that, Do you know? <laughs> we need to take steps beyond the illusion that is keeping us where we are, which is not sufficient, you know? Uh, visualize yourself walking, and as you're walking in the park, there's others walking too. In an instant, visualize as a light, as some form of transcendental light, you are in an instant in all those people's experiences. It's as if for a second you have just walked inside their vision in an instant. This is of course a hypothetical situation, but the reason I'm saying it is it's as if when I walk in the park, it's as if I think I'm walking at that speed. But my ability to conceive and my awareness to my existence is showing me that on very subtle levels we're infinitely experiencing every other person. It's as if uh, in, in this setting we're limited uh, by space and time, but in greater settings we are not. Because I noticed that based on my conditioning, the person I was, especially at an early age, wasn't a capable person. It's as if for many years I was looking at an incapability that was just humble. Humble incapability. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't much. But then I recognized the incapability was kept because I had not given my perception, my, my, myself permission to see new things. I had not. Many people who come from uh, Eastern cultures and come here, they, they are trying to hold, stay true to their roots. But at the same time, it's like the, the current society is fruitful too. Look at how much fun everyone's having. Look at how much freedom everyone's having. Look at how much things everyone's doing. So you're, you're in this position where you're like, gosh, uh, my behavior is changing because my intentions in a new moment are different because my awareness to my environment is different. And this is simply a basic thing. This is how uh, many people feel when they transition from one environment to another environment and suddenly it's a whole life decision. And for me, I moved around a lot when I was young in the sense that my family moved around to different schools. But I saw that the ability of consciousness is beyond its own segmentation. And what that means is that we are not looking at the curves that are creating our perception. Illusion is only elusive if you have an illusion defined. In the sense that you are aware that there is an illusion. Many people are, aware, uh, are not aware that there is an illusion. Because they are not trying to re, uh, review themselves. They are not trying to update their operating system and seeing that what are the newest ideas of humanity's conception. And when you try to look for the newest ideas that human beings have, Guess what? Where do you think the newest ideas are coming from? <laughs> you are a receiver of a new moment of experience and there's no reason why you should not have the awareness that you know you can have. You see, knowing is more important than believing. When you believe something, you are accepting the imagery of it which is suggesting a certain reality. When you know something, it's as if your trust is in the life that is you. And so a being who walked in this life as if he was all life was a being who all life came to and communicated. All life. In the sense that our ears weren't just listening to the suffering of people. 
we were looking at the fluctuation of our reality and in our understanding of it being the contribution to a healthier world. If we don't understand our reality, what are we just playing in a sandbox? We are alive, we are human beings. And life needs to be taken very seriously and very playfully, very playfully. Very playfully go and find the secrets of the universe. That's how it's done, I believe. <laughs> because in playfulness, you will give yourself the permission to perceive yourself in new ways. Similar to all those uh, meditations and psychedelics and all those other methodologies and how a being can give himself more existential allowance, playfulness is the greatest one. Because playfulness is you knowing how to play. You know how to play. Do you know? Kids know how to play and they don't go to school for it. They just know how to interact. So you naturally know yourself and how to interact. But if you are constantly thinking that you are an idea, you are an individual self in which all others must bow down to because you've identified yourself as the greatest individual, do you know? Then you will see that that is where uh, it is inefficient, not for anyone else, but for your reality. Because your acceptance of something without clearly observing your nature of being is making you think that this is it, but it's not. Do not be so convinced. There is no man in this world who can be so convinced as to tell you that one reality is the only reality, only in the sense that there is no reality through an emptiness that is all reality. And that is a knowing again, that is not a belief. A belief is like, I believe there's a unified field theory. Knowing is that moment where in the Himalayas, the meditator is, is experiencing energies that are just, it's as if he's awakening to how he could be manifest in many ways, in many conceptions, and in many considerations of space and time. Your limitation will become unreal the moment you see that the limitless has been the opening to your truth. Mankind must understand that as the consciousness comes into materiality, body is its own game. Your games don't even begin from the ego. They begin from the moment your sensory perception is present in a self-aware where, where it's, uh, it, it, it does not have the complete view. You must understand that uh, when I talk about multidimensionality, and especially when I talk, we want to see that concepts, uh, words, are the same, but the way words are used change the meaning of the word. So the context of the concept is where the understanding happens when you can perceive simultaneous context. So through my talk, it's very important that I do not acknowledge this, this, uh, the subtlest thing, but also the grossest thing as well. And when I say the grossest thing, I mean in the sense that it's the biggest thing. <laughs> you will see that life is kept by the awareness of the existential point of attention. So what that means is that if I close my eyes and suddenly uh, or something happens to me, I am not physically here. My point of existential attention is no longer in its material responsibility. It's as if my qualifications for being a material being has just ended and so that's, what, that's when, in a sense, uh, you become the wind. <laughs> oh gosh, how do you explain you becoming the wind? <laughs> Once you see that you are a simultaneous experience of all possibility, all your segmented sense of time becomes magical. You see it becomes magical, it's because you're tapping into a self-awareness of a greater uh, multidimensional nature. When I say multidimensional nature, that means you're acknowledging and confronting your segmented reality at the same time. Past, present, future, all experience at the same time. Your memory, all at the same time. Everything in one moment uh, that is now, that does not need any imagery. It does not even need, you know, to be called here and now. But just your awareness that you exist is very crucial. 
You must be aware of your moment of being and seeing that your health is based on how aware you are to the force of life that is keeping you present. For beyond space and time is where there is the potential for realities to expand. But human humanity needs to understand that uh, in its transitions, it wants to transi transition capably. So you as a human being are not here to just study your humanity. You're here to study how both human ideas are placed in the placeless and in a sense how conception comes into form from the formless. Because you are considering a relationship and a relationship is made of cause and effect. Because if everything was in an instant, our experience would be the same. So again, back to that analogy of being in the mall and suddenly walking and suddenly on some subtle level being an instantaneous experience of all those people who are walking, you kind of see it's as if in an instant uh, you have come back to the same point. So if you were to draw circles, we would see that concentric circles suggest that it all, it all goes down to the point. So it is some dynamics of how reality is real for you are only real if creation continues. If creation stops, you cannot conceive yourself even. For example, can you visualize yourself where you will be after death? No, because you are living. But you can become aware of death in the sense that you are first becoming in how you are receiving the ideology of death. How do you know? You might have you might have been a child and you've walked to some TV screen and death was like, you know, uh, the Terminator killing uh, people <laughs> or something. Do you know? You don't know what your experience of death is. But you always know what your experience of death can be if you're aware of the life that you are. The task of mankind now is to find ways where knowledge can be found, not through its separate branches, but through its similar roots. These roots all go down to the foundations of the human experience and also the spark that is the origin of your awareness in which all external reality is an emanation from. We are a greater moment of awareness holding uh, subtler moments of awareness which constantly find themselves merging back into this greater form of awareness. <coughs> <coughs> Playfully remember all that you are and you shall see that you have always played well. Study your life. Study all your segmented considerations in regards to body, mind, spirit, so don't leave these things in ideology. They will decay in the sense that your excitement will decay for them. If you're curious about something, you might not have had the, a lot of times in your life people saying, go ahead, do it, you know? Well, now I'm gonna tell you, go ahead and do all those things you thought you could not do. Go and attempt them. Because in doing so, you're breaking boundaries of limitation. You're getting rid of barriers that will give you so much greater clarity in your decision making in the future. Self-awareness is the most important thing and kids have it but we do not cultivate it probably in our education systems. Because it seems that kid who was just running around excited as a new energy in life forgets its sense of new energy and it, it's as if it does not understand that its engagement with its environment is its vitality. Because you and a lot of your considerations in regards to ideas that perhaps have, have been seen to dictate even uh, 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 the, the structures in water and it all leads to a new passage guys everything leads to a new passage You will see that you have many ways of acknowledging your thoughts and in doing so, people usually settle by setting their minds on the fact that they are one thing experiencing all other things. That is very true. You are an individual being and there is no doubt that you have an externality and you need to uh, understand the sciences of, of today 
and to be able to very capably and efficiently handle your physicality. But you must never forget about uh, the wisdom that comes from the life process itself. The wisdom that you cannot ask anyone but just learn from the fact that you've lived in life. Don't think all your lessons were consciously incorporated into your sense of person after you achieve the skill. It's very important that you enhance your ability by seeing that life has its beauty, but it requires beautiful eyes. You choose to see a bad world, you're not helping anyone. At least choose to see a good one and try to be more of a good contribution. If you're someone who your mentality makes you think that there is no reason to do anything, then you're a man of no reason. If you find there not to be a reason to study life, to see who you are, to see what you are, to look at you, where your direct experience leads, you have left something which must have been taken to fruition. In yoga, there is a certain imagery that suggests that beings could consciously leave their body in the sense that uh, through certain practice, meditative practice, the being could leave this physicality or they can do many things. You know, there are many things that the world of yoga holds. But it suggested that a human being can reach, for me at least, for Mr. Within, it suggested that a human being can reach the peak of ability in seeing that the next ability after you've gotten all the ability after you've become the strongest man, after you've, you've gotten all the wealth, after you've become the richest man, the next greatest ability is one to let go and dissolve into a new experience. So you, many human beings are not excited about their moment of existence. If you are, there will be no life and death because your excitement is a direct experience of constant uh, transformative passage. And you must realize it's kind of like self-communication. Some, some senses of change are, for example, outside of your body and they're unreal to you, so they are as new things. And some senses of change are similar. For example, uh, your hand moving or you walking, you know? These changes you're familiar with. It is how we handle novelty and how we receive in a novel state that suggests what we are. And you see, novelty is empty. So reception is simply a new breaking, it's as if if I was an artist and who had just drawn a very organized flower my whole life, just imagine I just drew a very organized flower, now I would take the brush and like a madman begin drawing self aware sciences. Mr. Within finds that all sciences will lead to a point where they will be, it's as if we will call all these branches entrance. Ideology will no longer be just a certain truth that says certain information about how something has to be. We see that it is an entrance into a possibility of our own conception. Similar to how the teacher was giving one lesson, but the 30 students were taking 30 different ways of that lesson. So sometimes our communication is individual, but the reception is, is, is vast, it's multidimensional. And imagine all those students began asking questions at the same time. You will see the teacher only requires one answer. You only require one instant sense of knowing and moment of self-awareness, -aware self-remembrance, self-reflection to in a sense clearly see who you are. And once you do, the self as other becomes the nothingness that held it all together. Your experience was always direct in the sense that you know you're experiencing. Know thyself, for you always know all that you can be. And when individualization is not speaking loudly, you may begin to see that in the silence, of a gentler gaze. The spaceless and timeless 
are your way. Much blessings and namaste.